EPCO Educational Topic Number 42, Puberty. Meet Tina Tanner. This video will discuss puberty, the endocrine process that will involve Tina's physical, emotional, and sexual transition from childhood to adulthood. The objectives of this video are to describe the changes in the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis and target organs during normal puberty, explain the normal sequence of pubertal events and ages at which these changes occur, discuss the psychological issues associated with puberty, and finally define precocious and delayed puberty and describe the steps in the initial evaluation of these conditions. Let's start our discussion with the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian or HPO axis. This has been quiescent all throughout Tina's childhood and it starts to become active during puberty. The arcuate nucleus in the hypothalamus releases GnRH. This will stimulate the anterior pituitary to release the gonadotropins FSH and LH. These will stimulate the ovary to produce estradiol and progesterone. The ovary is not the only source of sex hormone production in women. Adrenarche, the production of androgens from the adrenal glands, begins at approximately 6 to 8 years for girls. This involves the increased production of dehydroepiandrosterone, which can be converted to the more potent androgens testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Tina's sexual maturation will take approximately four years and occurs in a predictable sequence. First, there is growth acceleration, then thelarchy or breast development, pubarchy or pubic hair development, a period of maximum growth rate, and then menarchy, the onset of menses and ovulation. Estradiol from the ovaries will stimulate thelarchy, and androgens from the adrenal gland will stimulate pubarchy. There is a strong relationship between body fat content and the onset of puberty. Mild to moderate obesity results in an earlier puberty. There is also ethnic variation in the onset of puberty. This table demonstrates the mean ages of thelarchy, pubarchy, and menarchy in African American, Mexican American, and white girls in the United States. Note that the mean ages for thelarchy and pubarchy are almost a full year earlier for African American girls compared to white girls. The mean age for menarchy is closer for the three different ethnicities. The sequence of breast and pubic hair development is quantified by the Tanner classification of sexual maturity. This quantifies five stages starting with stage one being prepubertal to stage five which is adult development. Let's now move to psychological changes. Prior to puberty, there is no gender difference in depression rates between boys and girls. During puberty, however, the prevalence of depression is twice as great in girls compared to boys. During puberty, girls can become less satisfied with their physical appearance and develop a diminished self-worth. These tendencies have been reported to be more pronounced in white adolescents, and this transition is especially difficult if there is an early onset of puberty. Let's move now to precocious puberty. This is the onset of secondary sexual development prior to age 6 for African American girls and age 7 for white girls. Let's quickly diagram the HPO axis again. Here is the hypothalamus, which secretes GnRH, which stimulates the pituitary, which will then stimulate the ovary to make sex hormones. There are GnRH-dependent and GnRH-independent causes of early sex hormone production. GnRH-dependent causes result from early activation of the HPO axis. This is most commonly idiopathic. Other etiologies are infection or inflammation of the central nervous system, and rarely a tumor of the hypothalamic pituitary stalk will cause this. For the GnRH-independent causes, there is sex hormone production independent of HPO axis stimulation. McCune-Albright syndrome results from a defect in cellular regulation that results in the ovary-producing estrogen without FSH stimulation. This syndrome is also characterized by multiple bone fractures and cafe au lait spots. Other causes of GnRH-independent precocious puberty include ovarian tumors such as a granulosa cell tumor, adrenal tumors or enzyme-secreting defects such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and iatrogenic causes such as ingestion of oral contraception. The evaluation of precocious puberty should start with a careful history and first ask specifically how quickly puberty is progressing. A rapid progression of puberty symptoms suggests a GnRH independent cause such as an ovarian tumor. The history can also help you discern if the symptoms seem to be more from estrogen or androgen stimulation. The next step will be physical examination with pubertal staging. There should also be radiographic evaluation of bone age. The next step will be to check a serum LH level. First, you check a baseline LH. If this level is markedly high, then the diagnosis of GnRH-dependent precocious puberty can be made for an elevated LH shows that the HPO axis is active. If the baseline LH level is low or intermediate, the next step is to administer a GnRH agonist. If the level increases, then you know that you have a GnRH-dependent etiology for the precocious puberty. 
If there is no increase in the LH level with GnRH stimulation, then a GnRH-independent cause of the precocious puberty can be made. The next step in the evaluation of a GnRH-dependent cause of precocious puberty will be brain imaging. The evaluation with a GnRH-independent cause involves looking for a peripheral cause of the precocious puberty with laboratory testing and pelvic ultrasound. Let's now discuss the opposite spectrum with delayed puberty. This is when there is no secondary sex characteristic development by age 13, no evidence of menarche by age 15 to 16, or if menses have not occurred within five years of thelarchy. There are hypergonadotropic and hypogonadotropic etiologies for the hypogonadism that's associated with delayed puberty. With hypergonadotropic etiologies, there will be an elevated FSH level for the HPO axis is activated. The most common cause is Turner syndrome, the abnormality in or absence of one of the X chromosomes. Patients with Turner syndrome can present with primary amenorrhea and streak ovaries. They can often have associated short stature, webbed neck, and a solid chest. Treatment in this situation will involve administration of estrogen, which will stimulate breast development and genital tract maturation. In hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, the arcuate nucleus does not secrete GnRH. The most common etiology is constitutional delay, which accounts for 20% of all cases of delayed puberty. This tends to be familial. With Kalman syndrome, there is hypoplastic olfactory tracts, and the arcuate nucleus does not secrete GnRH. Young women will have little or no sense of smell and will have delayed puberty. Other etiologies include anorexia, exercise or stress, and craniopharyngioma is the most common tumor associated with delayed puberty. Lastly, there are anatomic causes that can result in primary amenorrhea in girls with normal breast development. Malarian agenesis, or meyer rokitansky kusterhauser syndrome, is congenital absence of the vagina and often uterus and fallopian tubes. There are normal ovaries since the ovaries are not derived from malarian structures. And if a patient has an imperforate hymen, there is obstruction of menstrual blood. Patients will present with uterine pain and a bulging vaginal introitus. This concludes the APCO video on puberty. We have discussed Tina's transition through this process and etiologies for why she could have precocious or delayed puberty.